So right now this 12 foot Esch no-till cedar is in the transport position. When you get into the field, this is great for going on road. You're eight and a half feet wide down the road. Um, it's about 9,000 pounds empty. Uh, it takes a little bit of power to pull it around. But when you get into your field, um, what you'll do is you'll drop these tires backwards that way. Then you fold down the two side tire, what we call the field tires. We drop those down. So all four tires are on the ground. We release a latch right here that will allow it to open and close. What will happen is now that the whole machine will spin by using a different remote on your tractor, the whole entire thing will spin sideways. Then you now pick these tires up. They will rest up here in the air and you'll be, your hitch will actually be going opposite side of this, but going that way. Now you're ready to go out in your field and do what you got to do. So when we get into the field, if you come around here, I'll show you. Um, it is equipped with lights so you can see where people can see you when you're going down the road. When you get out into the field, you want to start to um, set it up for depth, things like that. You don't want to put tiny little seeds too deep into the ground because they don't have a lot of energy. So the biggest problem people have is they seed too deep. You want to be no more than a quarter of an inch to almost on the surface. So what we'll do is we'll check the, the field conditions. Now, right now, this field is fairly hard given all the rain we've had. So we wouldn't want to go very deep with it. So what we would do is we would move these similar to a corn planter for your depth. So I just got to move that a little bit. See, right now it's quite rigid. If I move this back to here, now it's allowing it to go much deeper. Okay, so that allows all your seed discs that are down in here, it'll drop your seed down through into here. Your big seed goes through there, your small seed comes through there, drops it down in between them. It basically opens up a little V, drops your seed in there, and then these are your press wheels that pack it down in once it's in the ground. Simple as it could be. Um, this here, we are equipped with a foam marker system. Uh, you can either use GPS on your tractor or you can use a foam marker system where this will basically dawn dish soap or any kind of dish soap. We'll put out little tufts of foam every so often so you can kind of see where you're going because it does get kind of difficult when you are seeding over ground like this. It's not been, it's not that tough. It's, if it's cut low like that, it's quite hard to see what you've done. Uh, it's extremely hard to see. There's many times where I've <laughs> missed a little bit here and there and you don't know that for, for about two or three weeks and all of a sudden you see where everything you've missed um so this is a what they call a small seed box this is for alfalfa timothy clover things like that that are very very minute seeds um the upper box which i'll climb up and show you quick the upper box is for bigger seeds soybeans rye wheat oats triticale um anything of that nature um uh, orchard grass which is a big it's a it's a regular grass but it's big so it doesn't go through these boxes very well brome another one for hay fields and things like that would all go in here inside of here there are agitators there are um, metering wheels that drop the seed down quite nicely very evenly um, it's just a really good combination of how this thing works and it's quite simple to set up Calibrating is very simple. They tell you everything on the on the chart here that tells you, you know, what kind of seed you have, where to set the settings on how the you know however many pounds of seed you want to put down on the ground. Um, the only thing I've ever found that was cheap on this was the, the toilet bowl plunger, but it works. So it tells you when you're out of seed and when you're not out of seed. This one gives you another chart here for your alfalfa, red clover, Timothy, Teff grass is another tiny little seed. They're minute. They're like pepper flakes that's how small they are and no that's just a regular just like a regular cedar would have what you see right here these little gear driven things that's what you'll have right there that's that's exactly what's inside of there it's just a little wheel and you can adjust that your pounds per acre is right here super simple opened all the way up all correct everything is done on one one thing that's it it's, it's quite simple um, you know, we obviously clean it out after it's done every time, try to vacuum it out so nothing gets stuck in there. The other, th correct. <laughs> the other thing I do is I blow air through every one of these ports before it goes anywhere. Now I've, spiders like to crawl, crawl up inside and make little webs inside of there and a little bit of seed gets stuck in there and then all of a sudden you get a little bit of moisture or whatever, if it's been left outside, 
and everything just swells. So we, we keep those extremely clean. The ones out of this box never see the light of day. It, it drops out of this box and comes out through the bottom. Those are the big corrugated tubes, the big flex tubes you see underneath. That's where your big seed would come down through. I have run what they call bin run seed that has, um, uh, the bin run seed is, is stuff that's been combined. So like oats or rye or wheat or something along like that. It has not been through a seed cleaner. So it's got chaff, it's got heads, things like that still in it. I have run that through there with fairly good success. I have had some plugs here and there, which I get out about every three or four passes and I'll just check all the hoses just to make sure they're not plugged. It's very simple to clean them out. Rarely have I had a problem with that. But as far as uniformity. So do you have to go seed up and down the hill or if you go on a side of a hill is all the seed going to go to one side and you could miss stuff mm -hmm. on the upper section? no good question if you're on a side hill will it, the seed flow from one side to the other no there are dividers and there's five dividers inside of this mm -hmm. so each one they're about that wide so each one will flush with the top will hold about 50 pounds of seed in each individual one and again, there's there's little dividers in there. Once the thing is completely full, the dividers are useless, but the seed rarely moves around. It kind of lodges and bridges in there, but it does flow down through just by the weight of itself. Um, I have yet to see anything that has not come up uniform on a side hill, downhill, uphill. The only time I've ever had an issue was in really wet, heavy ground, and that's to be expected on something like this. So, um, and as far as like the front side of the machine, uh, it's kind of hard to see um comes with a toolbox obviously it's got little there's little plates in here that you can section off inside because it is five and a half inch spacing they give you they give you these little plates right here and you can cover up all the way down through you can cover up every other hole or every third hole if you so for instance if you wanted to try putting some corn in there i mean i wouldn't do it because it's not properly spaced but you could you know if you were going to solid seed uh, a food plot or something of that nature you can block off so if you want to do it in 30 inch rows or if you just want to put in a strip of wheat right here and a strip of wheat over here with vegetables in the middle you could do that simple put those over the top of the holes they fit right in there it's a plastic thing inside you set those in there it's slicker and it works it just plain works they're a little tricky to get back out but once they're in they're good there's a tool in here for that right there <laughs> i made it myself <laughs> so but um and then one other thing i'll show you on this uh as far as you know the open and closing and things like that um once it's opened up there is a an acre counter right here that you can see quite well um, it, it's very accurate and it's all done by this right here this wheel right here so if i were to pull into your field and you said okay mike i want to put down you know 10 pounds of timothy to the acre okay so we're going to go onto that box and we're going to set it to 10 pounds an acre but we're also going to do is inside of this tube right here there's a uh, two doweled tarp there's a dowel on this side and a dowel on that side, and it fits directly underneath the machine. It fits in between the tires. We'll put it underneath it, and we'll turn this wheel 66 times. All right, you turn that wheel 66 times, and that's going to give you one-tenth of an acre. You take that, whatever seed comes out, we pour it in a bucket, we weigh it. We weigh the bucket ahead of time, then we'll weigh it again afterwards, and that's going to tell me how much seed I'm actually putting down. So if it comes out to 3.5, then we know we have to cut our, our meter back a little bit because the, sometimes the weight of the seed is a little bit different than it's not always the same. Or if you're doing a mixture of Timothy alfalfa or whatever. Those get a little tricky to do at times, but you turn this wheel 66 times and that gives you one tenth of an acre. It, it, it explains everything right inside how to do it. It's so simple. Um, and again, for your big seed, this is your box, right? This is your adjustment right here. When it's open, you can obviously get right to it. Um, super simple. And then if you're really putting stuff down heavy, we open this up and we simply change these two sprockets around for high speed and low speed. So right now we're on a we're on a low range, which means we're putting in very small amounts of seed. If we were going to put down winter rye at 200 pounds an acre, we would we would flip flop these and you'd be 
it, it just basically doubles everything in speed so it comes out twice as fast and um again super accurate extremely accurate um i've been down to within a i'd say half a pound when i was doing small grasses i've also been over by 150 pounds because i didn't calibrate it correctly so there's there's different variables um as far as the, the most sophisticated part of the whole entire machine it's the opening and closing of it that's the heart that's the part that everybody has troubles with because you're doing three different functions with two remotes on your tractor you just need two remotes correct you need two remotes two i highly recommend at least 85 to 90 horsepower minimum unless you're on flat ground like this you can pull it with a little bit less um i have done it with 70 it was slow you know when i put it on i put it on 125 horsepower 130 horsepower i cook right along five miles an hour six miles an hour it, no problems at all and it just works it does its job so, so. it's not a slow speed either. oh no I mean, well i move right along i, I guess so i've done 30 35 acres in a day without trying and that's you know not even a full day that's stopping and refilling and stuff that's with grain you know doing uh wheat or rye or whatever it may be that day but we've had pretty good success with everything we've planted so far i've, I've been quite happy